good morning everyone so in this uh, session i'll be talking about uh, impact assessment principles um let me start with introducing myself i'm aditya i work as a scientist in the division of agriculture economics uh, iri um so uh, in this session what we are going to do is trying to understand what is impact assessment before moving on to any specific techniques of impact assessment it becomes very important that we understand what is impact if you understand what is impact then only you will be able to understand what are the difficulties in measuring the impact um and then only you will be able to appreciate why we need separate set of methods to uh, use the word impact or to estimate the impact uh, we why we need separate set of methods so to understand that you need to be very clear about the term impact and also what is not impact because this is one of the uh, most commonly used and misused word in um economic uh, economics literature so the whole purpose of this session to, is to clarify what is impact let me go to the slide share mode okay um so i'll explain a few terms which i'll be using uh, frequently in in this uh, session not only this session uh, this entire course on impact assessment i'll be using these terms synonymously so i do not want to spend more time explaining them further so what do you mean by treated in impact assessment remember always we are trying to uh, identify the effect or impact of a treatment or intervention or a program so in that usually we will have two groups one group is a group of participants who received the treatment or who adopted a new technology or who benefited from a particular program or who received a particular intervention we call that particular group of individuals or farmers as treated units okay we compare the treated units with those who did not receive that particular intervention let us call that group as control okay so i hope i am clear treated group of individuals who received the treatment on the other hand control group of individuals who did not get the treatment and when you say i am assessing impact the next question first question will obviously be impact of what so that is what treatment signifies are you measuring the impact of a technology are you measuring the impact of a particular training program what is that you are measuring that becomes your treatment the next important question is on what first question is of what second question is on what so here we specify the set of outcome variables so outcome variables are the variables on which we wish to measure the impact so for example uh, you are trying to measure the impact of technology adoption in that case uh, you are trying to measure the impact of technology on farmers income or it may be yield or it may be input use so that yield income input use all those things becomes the outcome variables i explained this already intervention technology treatment all the mean same that is nothing but the intervention then there are covariates so le let us assume this in terms of number of variables one variable is your treatment variable depending on impact of what we are trying to measure that becomes the treatment variable in a sense treatment variable distinguishes who are in the treatment or who are the individuals who got the treatment and who are in the control how do you do it in, with with the help of variable we create a dummy variable usually dummy variable takes the value of 1 if the person belong to treated group if it it takes the value 0 if he belongs to control group right next set of variables that are called as covariates 
So other independent variables that you want to consider in the modeling framework, they are called as covariates. Then you have outcome equation and a selection equation. It is important here to make the distinction very clear. Outcome equation is nothing but outcome as a dependent variable and set of independent variable in addition to the variable dummy variable for adoption that is called as outcome equation. Why do you call it as outcome equation? Because here the outcome variable is a function of other variables. Fine. So let us consider uh, the case of uh, adoption of a new variety. Okay. So outcome variable is income. So the, your question is whether adoption of the new technology helps farmer to get a better yield or not. In that case, the outcome equation will be income as a function of first variable will be adoption. How the, uh, the whether that particular unit has adopted the technology or not. That is a first variable. Then a host of a set of other variables like maybe age, uh, education and other things. Uh, excuse me. Then there is another variable, another equation, uh, sorry, that we call as selection equation. So what is this selection equation? So remember, I'll, I'll come to it, uh, why we need a selection equation in, in, in the next half of the session. So here we take adoption as a dependent variable. So here, remember why we call it as selection? Because who gets into treatment and who gets into control or who adopts a technology and who doesn't want to adopt a technology, who are in the treated, who are in the control, that variable here, I'm terming it as adoption as a function of all the variables which determines the adoption. That becomes the selection equation. Going back to the example that I started, who adopts a new variety as a function of all the covariates which determines the adoption that we call as selection equation. Now I come to the crux of impact assessment. That is theory of causal analysis. So this theory of causal analysis is concerned with establishing the causation and the magnitude between the cause and effect. So all your impact assessment technology uh, techniques that you study, the root of all those techniques is from theory of causal analysis. So what we do here, we establish that X causes Y. Let X be the cause, Y be the effect. Let X be the adoption, Y be the income. First step is to establish that X causes Y. Increase in income is due to variety. If you are able to say that, that is the first part of the causal analysis. The next important part is to quantify that effect. By how much the income of the farmer has increased because of adoption of this particular technology. So this is the, the crux of causal analysis. Okay, from this, we go one step ahead in defining impact, but I'll go the other way around and I'll try to define what is not impact. Uh, I think I started my session by saying that impact is the word which is very much used, also misused, right? So you might have see, read many papers where the title is impact assessment and they have done something. At the outset itself, I want to clarify certain things are not impact assessment when you look at it from the lens of causal analysis. I want to tell you why is not, why it is not impact. That is what I want to tell you now. Okay. So many of the papers that I have referred, you simply look at the number of adopters. Say 70% of the farmers have adopted. That is the impact. No, that is not impact. 
Another common thing is correlates of adoption or factors determining adoption. You take a logiter probit, then you say with increase in age, farmers adopt a technology, educated farmers adopt the technology, so on and so forth. That is not adoption. I mean, that is not impact. I'm sorry. Then most common mistake that we do. We have 100 adopters. We have 100 non-adopters. Then what we do? We take the yield of adopters average. Then we take the yield of non-adopters average. Then we simply subtract them and say, because of adoption, the yield has increased by, say, five quintals. That is not impact. The simple difference of mean across adopter and non-adopter is not impact. Remember this, I'm repeating at the sake of being, um, I mean, um, at the sake of making you bored, but this is important. That is why I'm repeating it. Another common mistake is, uh, say, the policy was introduced in 2016. At that time, income was, say, 5,000 rupees. Now the income has increased to 7,000 rupees. So the impact of that policy is 2,000 rupees. No, that's not income. At the same time, if you compare the income across treated and control, that is not impact. Working out cost and returns, saying that the returns is higher in treated group, it is not impact. Why it is not impact? If you want to understand that point, then you should be able to understand what is impact first. So let us try and define impact. From the theory of causal inference, impact is measurement of how much beneficiaries are affected by an intervention. I think that so, so far it's clear. We are trying to measure because of this technology and this technology alone, how much income has increased. What we have to do is compare the units receiving the treatment to what would have happened in the absence of that treatment. Okay, there are two words. Let us imagine this in terms of two words. One is the real word where the unit received the treatment. The farmer adopted the technology. He got 15 quintals of yield. Now you have to imagine a hypothetical scenario and what would have happened if the farmer were not to adopt that technology? Then what would have happened? That what would have been the yield? Then if you take the difference between the two, then it is called as impact. In essence, credible impact assessment is to make data exchangeable. Impact should not change if you change the control units into treatment and treatment units into control. If you rate it in the form of notations, then how you can say it? So in summary, what you have to remember is impact assessment is to quantify what would have happened in the absence of the treatment. So let us write it in the terms of an equation. Expected value of yi1, yi1, y is nothing but your outcome variable, in this case maybe yield. One is it received the treatment minus expected value of y when it did not receive the treatment. Now think of this in a real time situation. Can you observe yi1 and yi0 at the same point of time? It is impossible. If the farmer has adopted the technology, you will be able to observe only what is the yield when he has adopted. You will not be able to get what would have been the yield in the same year, in the same plot, had he not adopted. So both outcome for adoption and non-adoption for the same unit, same year is not observed. So what we do, we take the data from two separate groups. One is treated group who has adopted the technology and another one is a control group who has not adopted the technology, then try to measure the impact. Before going into that group case, let me make you clear correlation is not causation. I understand that you have taken the uh, mean yield of adopters and mean yield of non-adopters and mean 
yield of adopters is higher, their incomes are higher. This is a correlation, not a causation. Okay, adoption having higher income is only a correlation, not causation. If you want to establish the causation, you need more analysis. Okay, you need more assumptions to be satisfied. If you do not check for those assumptions, then you cannot make the causal claim. Let me give some examples so that this concept becomes more uh, clearer to you. For example, marriage in church has a high correlation with unnatural deaths. Just by this correlation, can you say that this is causation, that marriage in church is causing this unnatural deaths? No. Sunglass sales is highly correlated with ice cream sales. By this alone, can you say that if a man purchases sunglasses, he is very likely to purchase ice cream? No. Why it is happening? Because both are caused by a third factor, which is sunshine. Right? Similarly, I'll use an example quoted by Scott Cunningham in his book, uh, Causal Inference Mixtape. Aliens decided to visit planet Earth. Aliens are nothing but uh, um, the life on other planets. They wanted to visit planet Earth. And when they observed it from the top, aliens eye view, you can call. And they saw that going to hospital make people sick. So they thought that hospital is the evil. Hospital is making people sick. So they decided to attack the hospitals. Sounds stupid. We also make such mistakes. When you only observe a correlation, we jump into a causation, which is wrong. There is no evidence to say that hospital are making people sick. In fact, sick people are going to hospital. So there may be a reverse causation and there may be confounders. So sometimes when, when you see that it is raining and people are holding umbrella, it is simply a correlation between raining and holding an umbrella. But when a third person observes it, he might make a mistake that carrying an umbrella makes it rain. So that is causation. We Just based on correlation, you cannot make that causation. Similarly, somebody may say everybody who went to the moon has eaten chicken, but eating chicken doesn't make you go to moon. Sleeping with my shoes always gives me headache, but you might have remember, forgotten a confounder. You sleep with your shoes when you have drunk. So the drinking may be causing the headache, not the shoes. But if you simply run the correlation, having shoes on while sleeping has a high correlation with your headache, but that may not be causation. At the same time, lack of correlation doesn't mean lack of uh, causation. So a sailor sometimes moves the rudder to the right, sometimes to the left. But when aliens observe it from the top, they will just simply say that he is moving to the light, to the left, depending on the wind speed, but the boat is moving in the same direction. They might make a stupid decision that since there is no correlation between how he is moving the rudder and the direction, they may assume that rudder is broken. He is trying to move it in a different direction, but it is not responsive. But here there is no correlation between the rudder movement and the direction, but there is a third confounding variable that is wind speed according to which he is moving the rudder which is helping to sail the boat in the right direction. So lack of correlation doesn't mean lack of causation. I'll go to a hypothetical oversimplified case. So I'll give a quick recap. What is impact? What is the outcome in the presence of treatment? For the same individual, what is the outcome in the absence of the treatment? If you take the difference, that is impact. Unfortunately, you cannot observe both. So what you do? One person who receives the treatment, one person who doesn't receive the treatment or group of person in the treatment group, group of person in the control group. Then we try to take the difference and can we say it as an impact? Let us assume, uh, let us examine that question with the help of one hypothetical example. Let us say you want to measure the impact of cricket coaching on the run score. So what you will do, you assume that it, uh, 
too much uh, simplified case. Assume you have two persons. One is me and another person is Virat Kohli. Okay. We have two persons. And I will get to go for the coaching. I will go to Pusa ground every day and I will practice batting with the help of a coach. And Kohli doesn't get to attend the coaching. I will go for coaching at for say six months. Both, both, and both of us face a bowling machine. Kohli scores 50 of 12 balls and I score hardly 10 runs after getting bowled out for twice. So, in the regular impact assessment framework, what is the conclusion that you make? The difference between treated unit, that is run scored by me, and the control unit, that is Kohli, which is minus 40 runs or minus 40 marks, whatever you call. So, can you make the conclusion that Getting a cricket coaching reduces the number of runs scored by 40. Can you make that claim? Can you say cricket coaching is bad for the batsman and they score 40 runs less for 12 balls? Uh, can you make this claim? No. Think through it. Why is the answer no? Because Koili is a better batsman even without a coaching. So, you could be understating the impact. There is a pre-treatment difference. Ideally, impact would have been Aditya with coaching minus Aditya without coaching. Now, what you are doing? Aditya without coaching, you are removing because Aditya without coaching is not available. So, you are substituting him with Koili without coaching. But apart from coaching, there are difference between Aditya and Kohli. Even without coaching, Kohli is 100,000 times better than Aditya in batting. Right? So, going back to the notation, it is expected value of Yi1 minus expected value of Yi0. That is, if you literally translate it, it is run scored by Aditya with coaching minus run scored by Aditya without coaching. Since you cannot go observe both in the same point of time, since you do not have the clone of Aditya, you are substituting with a Koili. Koili is the counterfactual, but Koili is not a good counterfactual because there are a lot of pretreatment differences. If you want to measure the impact, the other person or the Koili must be as close to Aditya as possible. So Koili is not a good counterfactual. You have to bring someone else who is very close to me before coaching. Then only you can measure the differences. Same time. You might be uh, thinking why I am explaining all these things nonsense in, in, in the impact assessment class. You, you might think that it's too uh, oversimplified. Is it? No. So when you compare the income of beneficiary with the non-beneficiaries, what will happen is that usually the beneficiaries and the non-beneficiaries are not comparable. You might be comparing Koili and me. When you compare the adoption and non-adoption, uh, you usually say in agriculture extension that adopters are the farmers who have better uh, education, better socioeconomic status, better extension contact. Obviously, they are coilies. Even without adoption, they will have higher incomes. When you compare them with the small farmers who do not have extension contact, the difference in income may be not only due to what you call as the effect of that technology, but also due to pre-treatment differences between the treated and the control units. That is why we need impact assessment methods. So when we expand the notation to two groups, there is treated and the control. Let us call T is equal to one treated group, T is equal to zero control group. And impact in literary terms, the true impact, impact parameter, is yi1 when the group is treated minus expected value of yi0 when t is 1. Remember, in both the cases here, okay, in both the cases here, what you can see is, okay, it is t is equals to 1, which means both the units are from the treated unit. One received the treatment, other did not receive the treatment. So this second part of the equation is not observed because everyone in the treated group has already received the treatment. This is a hypothetical scenario which you cannot. 
So what we calculate is we calculate impact hat, not impact. Okay. Impact hat is equals to expected value of y1 i given t is equals to 1. I'll translate it. That is in the treatment group, what is the yield if they are treated? In the control group, what if they are not treated? Obviously, in the control group, nobody received the treatment. So this is impact hat. Now compare what is impact hat and impact. You should remember that bias is nothing but impact minus impact hat. So the first term in both the equations are the same. It cancels out each other. So what is left is these two difference between these two terms. So as long as expected value of y i 0 given t is equals to 1 minus expected value of y i 0 given t is equals to 0 bias is 0. So let us convert this into textual expression. If the treatment is removed from the treated group, if all the units who are receiving the treatment in the treated group were not to get the technology, then the outcome in both the groups are same, which means to say the only difference between the treated and the control group has to be treatment. If the treated group and control group differ in factors other than treatment also, then you cannot make the causal claim. This also supports what we call as data exchangeability. So with some circus, what you can do is you can add and subtract yi0 given t is equals to 1, which means what would have happened if the treatment group were not receiving the treatment, then you do some jugglery, then what you get is yi1 t is equals to 1 minus yi0 t is equals to 1. That is nothing but average treatment effect plus bias. So impact hat is nothing but ATE plus bias. Okay. So there are further three treatment effect indicators. One is average treatment effect on the treated. Second is average treatment effect on the untreated. Third is average treatment effect. Okay. So first is if you measure the impact only on the adopters, that is ATT. If you measure the impact only on the non-adopters, that is called ATU. If you measure the uh, F treatment effect over entire sample, treated and controlled together, that becomes ATE. So usually in economics, we use ATT. Okay. Um, I don't want to go into this. So um, that's it for this session. I uh, hope you are uh, comfortable with what we have discussed. In the next session, uh, we will deal more about the impact assessment, need of impact assessment methods and how randomization and random sampling are different. Thank you Sam, so much. Um, for more, you can see the other videos in this uh, particular folder. Thank you.